part where I said, you, I know you're going to get fired and that there's going to be a bidding war for this show. Play that, Mr. Honesty. Third place. And by the way, my bonus for uh, the last book is very nice. I enjoyed that. You're a crash and burn. People in the industry, I swear on a stack of Bibles, people in the industry have contacted me and said, Jesus, this is the worst radio I've ever heard. People at Beasley in a meeting, corporate people, talked about when you came across the street and protested against Felger that it was mind-blowingly dumb. You will never get another job in radio. You will be fired before the end of the year. And that will be that. Third place. <laughs> and I can, you can talk about all you want, but we won the last book. Been on that show for five years, Captain Tough Guy. I know you. I'm not afraid of you. You're crashing. Third place. This show is unlistenable. You become an industry joke. You don't believe me? Ask around. You know who I know. You know who I know. You're not long for this business, young man. You can go take your money, and you can go escape. You can buy a Caribbean island, but you're done. Ain't nobody going to hire you when you're fired. Oh, I can't wait for the bidding war. I've been told that Entercom even would hire us out of the market to get us out of town. So the, 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 but the pot is, is full for us. What are you going to do? Nothing. There's not, any, there's not an option. And that's a reality. Play this. Play this and respond to it instead of picking and choosing. Or play bird audio from, uh, from uh, to six years ago. Or, um, I'm sorry, in reality, a, week, um, a, a month ago. You know, you're not a bad guy, but you keep lying and you keep crashing. And you're, I told you before, it ain't going to last. There's only so much of that hack garbage radio that you do that's sustainable until everyone finds out what you're doing. It's no secret we rip off Stern. Why don't you wet yourself more about Sour Shoes calling in? <laughs> I mean, like, you're, you're thrilled that Sh Sh Sour Shoes called in? Sour Shoes calls into every radio show across the country. You know why that you wet yourself? And by the way, you're a hero. Howard Stern has ripped on you on his radio show. Oh, I am so fed up with it. You are going to be fired. And you will not get another job in the industry because the reputation of you is you're a trust fund kid and that you don't care about your job and that you are liable to cost everyone advertisers. And by the way, your ratings aren't good enough to get away with it. And also the, around the industry is that you're a Howard Stern ripoff and it's embarrassing. I've been in radio for 20 years. Make fun of that. I've been in radio for 20 years. I know everybody in this industry. I'm speaking at the Talkers Convention in New York City. Come out to it. I'll teach you a little something. You don't, you don't know the people that I know. You're, you're a hack. And it's not me saying it. You're a nice enough person. It's not me saying it. I wish you the best. But you're a hack that's going to be fired. You're not good enough to pull the crap you're doing. The show's in a free fall. It really is, dude. It is. I'm talking directly to you. It is. Well, if you're happy to call into your show, you call into my show. No. No. I'm not taking your phone call, you hack. What, are you going to pretend it's Man Cow and Stern? Are you going to pretend it's uh, D Debella and Stern? Why don't you rip off another thing? It's amazing to me that you grew up in an area where Howard Stern was on the radio and that you can rip him off to this degree. But looks like a monkey. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Bubba booey, Bubba booey. Sarah Shoes called it. Ho, 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 ho. And by the way, I, I like that someone in the industry, I swear to God, called and asked me to listen to your fourth hour of your show. And you had the audacity to tell Callahan, who's, by the way, had a tremendous amount of success in this market, who's phenomenally more talented than you, that uh, you appeal to 20-year-olds. Oh, boy. <laughs> Why don't you read the 18 to 34 numbers? Okay, here's the challenge. Here is the challenge. Do this right now. And tell me, if you are a radio person, tell me what you want. Okay? Okay? Read right now the 18 to 34 numbers and the 18 to 49 numbers. Read them now. Read them on the air now, Mr. Reality. 
Mr. Captain Fun, read them on the air right now. You're a crash and burn disaster. Read how many young people you appeal to with your stupid garbage. Go read it. Read them. Read them right now. I'll wait. Twitter, uh, Rich. Yeah, Twitter, Rich. I'm very young. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter, send Rich. Rich t- you, Twitter, t- do the tweet to Rich. <laughs> Twitch, Twitter. You tell Rich exactly if they say it on the air, God bless them. And read the numbers. Read them. Not just the place. Read the numbers. Read the numbers. 18 to 34 and 18 to 49. Well, they don't matter. They don't matter. Oh, really? Oh, really? They don't matter? Oh, uh, yeah. They do a lot. Do I want an audience of octogenarians? Or do I want an audience that's going to grow with the show? Read them. I'll wait. You read those numbers. You read those numbers and I'll have nothing but respect for you. I will get on the air and I will say, you guys are the most honest and real show in the world. (laughs) I will. Do it. Rich will have you on in the other room. I know you tape the show. You tape our show. You tape our show so you can play audio of me talking about Bird. Good. Thank you. Thank you. This is the last I'm going to say it because I swear to God, someone, a big person in the industry, called me yesterday. I swear to God, Rich, it's true. And said, listen to the fourth hour of their show. It's going around the industry as one of the worst hours of radio in a major market that I've ever heard. I swear to God, you're a joke, a laughing stock. You're going to be fired. You're a joke in the industry. Mm-hmm. And, the, and, and you know why? Because you thump your chest and you say how great you are and you're nothing. You haven't proved anything. I do this show my way. I, 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 I. I listened to that fourth hour. It was you and Kellen. And you said, no, you, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? Well, I want to talk about this. Well, you're, being, you're insensitive. No, I'm not sensitive. What do you want to talk about? Are you joking? Go listen to that fourth hour. Go take that fourth hour and send it to anyone in the industry. And come back and tell me what they say about it. Listen, I might suck on the radio and I might be the worst and you're the best, but put that, find an hour of radio that I've ever done in my career that's worse than that hour. Your show's a sinking ship. Oh, we're resorting to weeklies now. No, 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 no. What I'm resorting to is patterns. Patterns. Things are looked upon as patterns. They're not looked upon as isolated incidents. Isolated numbers, they're patterns, you're crashing, you're failing. It feels great. I woke up this morning feeling so good. Trot around that you were number one for two years. You know you weren't. Bert, I just woke up 20 minutes ago. Are you okay? (laughs) (laughs) That's a pretty good joke. Uh, Listen, God bless Bert. I got mad at him that day. I think I had every right to. But I woke up this morning with a big smile on my face. You know what? Let's call my wife and ask her if someone called me from the, from the industry to ask me to listen to the fourth hour of the show. My wife wanted to listen to it. We sat down and listened to it. It was great. She wanted to make love to me afterwards because <laughs> she realized what a breadwinner I am and how talented I am. I've never felt better about myself than I do right now in terms of radio. And it's weird how much radio affects my mood. I came in here with a smile on my face, ready to make fun of Wallach right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> so Captain Honesty, go ahead and read the 1834s and 1849s and tell me that they don't matter, but they do. Your audience is ancient. You're an ancient personality. You appeal to old people. You appeal to grandmas and grandpas. We're on television. I don't know why I said that. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why I said that. Because we don't include those numbers. Well, no. Because, you know, uh, I don't know. I I think our television ratings are nothing to really applaud. (laughs) Damn it. I think think that they're pretty bad. I would imagine we're not... (laughs) Wait a minute, you're seeing not many people watch us? I'm going to, well, apparently everyone watches us. That's the thing, it's like, I I watch you all the time. But uh, but I'm guessing if you you cracked a Nielsen ratings, that we're not going to be up there with the Today Show. Damn it. Well, they pay us so much. 386%, by the way. That's just a spoiler alert. 
Spoiler for the people listening. 18 to 34, how much we beat them by. Uh, but, but it doesn't matter, Rich. It doesn't matter because what we really, what the companies really want to go after is someone whose median age of listener was... Oh. 50? Was it 50? I think it was a little no, higher. No, it was higher? Yeah, I think I it was, higher it was a little higher. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. 57? Okay, read read those numbers without poo-pooing them. You can't poo-poo them. You have to read the numbers and justify why they don't matter. And then I will come on and I'll say, you know what, they're the most honest show in the world. And then when you buy your Caribbean island and move there without another place to broadcast, or you can go to Barstool Radio, I suppose. You can move your family to New York City and take on that salary. All right, here are the headlines. Body. 